Good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to see you again after luncheon. So it's very good. And the title of my presentation is a conferring parameter along a, a three-dimensional crack front stress field. And my name is Yuri Matvienko. I am from Russian Academy of Sciences. And this uh, uh, research <coughs> uh, was carried out together with, in collaboration with my colleagues, Valery uh, Shryanikov and uh, Natalia Bolchenko. They are from Russian Academy of Science too. So, uh, outline of my presentation. Uh, first of all, I would like to give a brief uh, introduction and motivation of this research. And after that, we will consider uh, configuration of specimens and uh, material properties because we have a uh, numerical preparation of stress state situation ahead of the notch creative solution. And uh, I will uh, give some information about numerical procedure and after that uh, results in discussion and finally we will have some uh, brief uh, conclusions. So, uh, you know that there is a, a very important problem of uh, transferability because it will measure fractured toughness using uh, standard specimens we need to transfer this fracture toughness on the real structure damage by cracks. So, uh, there is few different sources of change in uh, constraint of specimens and structures. Uh, we can consider uh, two constraints, the parameters, connected with in-plane and out-of-plane constraints. Um, uh, you know that uh, uh, in-plane constraint uh, is associated with crack length, uh, specimen configuration, type of loading, and uh, notch or crack. But uh, in contrast to uh, this, uh, the source of change of the out-of-plane constraint is thickness. So we have uh, two uh, constraint parameters connected with the uh, out-of-plane constraint and the in-plane constraint. So, uh, we need to develop fracture mechanics uh, in the direction of uh, creation uh, constraint corrected fracture mechanics. And uh, if we will consider uh, dependence of fracture thousands against some uh, constraint parameter, Q parameter, or T stress parameter, or second term in the uh, stress field A2. Uh, so uh, this parameter uh, should be incorporated in our basic equations to uh, calculate the real uh, value of range of thousands. <coughs> we will consider the median type of uh, elastic stress field. It should be noted that there are uh, two terms. First term is a singular term connected with the stress, uh, uh, stress intensity factor. And the second one is a non-singular term. In this case, this value is denoted by T. Uh, uh, just uh, uh, one example of the uh, construction at master kill or constraint master kill for uh, pipe steel. Uh, you can see that a uh, notch fracture uh, thousandth for critical notch stress intensity factor uh, against the uh, chest stress uh, give us uh, uh, some uh, dependence for different kinds of specimens. So this is a, a good result because in this case if we will have measured fracture thousands using some specimen, for example compact tension specimen, it will be possible to uh, transfer this value on another kind of configuration specimen and type of loading. So it's it's a, it's a real way to to construct uh, some dependence which allow us uh, the estimation of uh, residual strength and the uh, lifetime of uh, real engineering structures. But it's uh, just a preliminary result because we need to understand how to uh, take into account the uh, crack length, crack size and so on. It's just for different kinds of specimen, but with same crack length. But uh, if we will uh, consider a three-dimensional crack problem, in this case, we need to take into account 
to uh, parameter connected with the uh, constraint. First one is uh, associated with in plane uh, constraint, and the second one, T33, uh, is uh, uh, out of plane parameter. So uh, we need uh, to take into account this parameter to construct uh, uh, some uh, constraint corrected stretching gain approach. So the motivation of this research is in the following. The general analysis of constraint effect requires to be defined more exactly and three key problems taking into account in plane and out of plane constraint. Secondly, uh, the uh, constraint parameter should be determined for different uh, configuration of specimen. In our case, it's the uh, center prep plate, three point pen specimen, and compact tension specimen. And of course, we need to take into account time of loading, because we're talking about configuration of specimen, thickness, and so on, so on. But we need to uh, remember that uh, time of loading should be uh, very important and give a very strong effect on uh, constraint parameters. And finally, in plane and out of plane constraint effect on uh, press from the uh, stress field under grid conditions are estimated by means of three dimensional numerical analysis of finite thickness specimen in this research. So, uh, we have considered two uh, configurations of, of specimen. First one is the center crack tension specimen. Second one uh, is the single edge noise band specimen and compact tension specimen. The thickness was uh, approximately uh, same. And the crack aspect ratio was uh, 0.5. It's a, uh, just a standard specimen. So here uh, you can see a three-dimensional finite element model of specimen for CT specimen and uh, CCT specimen and uh, single edge length pen specimen. And just uh, a few words about printing materials. Uh, we have used the uh, uh, top of train rate uh, in this form, which is uh, related to stress by the following equations. And strain hardening exponent uh, is uh, 4.96. The three parameter and pre exponent given here. And the time of preloading are varied from uh, 100 to a few thousand hours. Uh, in our research, we used a uh, few constraint parameters. Tz factor introduced by Guon. You can see this equation. A stress dexterity proposed by Henry Elkmeyer. And the non singular T33 uh, stress, which uh, can be calculated using this very simple equation, which was obtained from uh, extension of a stress uh, field. And uh, non singular T11 stress, which is a, a parallel to the plane a great plane. And uh, in our result, all dimensional stresses were normalized by applied stress. So, uh, now I would like to show you uh, some uh, results obtained uh, by means of numerical uh, estimation of uh, stress field ahead of the red team. And uh, we have considered three configurations of specimen. And it can be uh, seen that in plane constraint, here T11 uh, parameter decreases along the crack front towards the specimen free surface. So this line, this is a free surface. And here, uh, this is a, a specimen center. And if you will consider the values of T11 stress, it can be seen that uh, since specimen is more constrained by implant parameter with respect to other configuration of specimens. Also, uh, it should be noted that the T11 stress decreases significantly 
will increase increase of Greek time for all specimens. It means that the in-plane port strength is lost when non-linear strain state changes from the small scale Greek conditions to extensive Greek conditions. Because uh, you can see that the line number one correspond to uh, small scale print conditions. It's like uh, uh, quasi static conditions. Okay. Uh, uh, the effect of brief time, brief time on the distribution on the, of the T11 stress on line of crack extension is given for mid plane of specimen. And uh, you can see uh, two pictures. First one is uh, small scale uh, quick conditions, and second one is uh, uh, extensive quick uh, conditions. For uh, small quick, uh, uh, small scale quick conditions, we have uh, some stabilization of uh, uh, G11 stress outside of a very small uh, region ahead of the crack uh, chip. But for extensive uh, creep conditions, we have uh, stabilization of this parameter uh, ahead of the crack G. So uh, here uh, you can uh, see the relation of constraint parameter along the crack front for different specimen uh, configurations. Uh, these pictures is uh, connected with uh, an analysis of uh, TZ, and uh, here we have considered the excellency uh, factor H. Again, uh, you can see that uh, in the middle, mid uh, plane of specimen, there is some stabilization uh, of uh, GZ factor. And again, uh, creep uh, time uh, is affected for all uh, specimen configuration. Uh, from the less uh, pictures, uh, it can be also seen that our flame option parameter decreases along the press front uh, towards the specimen, uh, specimen free surface, this region. And again, uh, single edge energy specimen is more constrained with respect to other integrational specimen. And uh, I would like uh, uh, I would like to notice that uh, in contrast to T11 stress, the T33 stress increases significantly with increase, with increase of peak time for all specimens. For all specimens. <coughs> uh, here uh, we have observed the detect of peak time on distribution on the T33 stress on the line of Correct add extension. And uh, uh, it can be seen that uh, again there is some stabilization of uh, G3 stress uh, outside of small uh, region ahead of the load of crack G. But in contrast, in contrast to uh, behavior of G11 stress, here we have stabilization and uh, for G11 stress there is a stabilization outside the uh, in the vicinity of correct G. And finally, I would like to show you the relation of amplitude factor in the center of uh, the specimens. If we will uh, give stress components near correct G uh, by the following equations, then A1 and A2 and 3 uh, correspond to uh, amplitude factor for corresponding terms in the expansion expansions of stress uh, field. Uh, it can be seen that there is some shift of uh, this curve uh, constructed for different uh, specimen configuration in the region of uh, uh, low uh, constraint. And uh, conclusions. Uh, in the end and the out of constraint parameters, are analyzed and you will only take into account the interaction between loading conditions, specimen geometries, and crack body thickness. We have a uh, considered distribution of constraint parameters uh, along the crack front under different loading conditions 
of keeping uh, having in Kilo for various configurations as needed. It's found that uh, the in-plane and the out-of-plane constraint parameter behavior strongly depends on the grip time. So uh, in general case, the constraint parameter could be time dependent. And finally, uh, the relation between uh, three-dimensional crack from constraint parameter in terms of T and the A2 and thickness of specimens can be drawn and with it uh, the combined effect of in-plane and out-of-plane constraint on fractured thousands should be analyzed. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very so much for keeping so well to the, to the time. Um, and now the time is open for questions. <coughs> Thank you. Well, this gives us a lot of useful information, so I guess the question is how to use it, really. <laughs> uh, what do you recommend yes, if I want to know the terms? It's, it's a very good question, <laughs> but uh, it's just a parametric problem. Sure. So, uh, we have some uh, load or stress, and we have information about stress-stress situation ahead of the notch peak, peak uh, along the uh, front, front, uh, crack front. But uh, for future research, we need to test specimen with different, different uh, thickness and different configuration of specimen. Under that, for critical load, we will have same calculation of stress distribution along the crack uh, front. And after that, we will try to construct some dependence and to understand the effect of uh, in-plane and uh, out-of-plane constraint parameter on fractured outcomes. So it's, it's a, uh, this uh, research is not finished. So oh, I understand. <laughs> Maybe it's a question for everyone in the audience yeah, because it's, it's a question we all think about. Mm -hmm. I mean, do, do people have uh, any opinions about what is the yeah. best uh, constraint parameter to use? Or, uh, how yeah. you That's why we have used a uh, few, 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 few constraint right. parameters. Okay. Yeah. Well, what difference I will get in the fracture toughness if I don't account for that? Constraint. So, okay, I understand the question. Let's say if, if normally I will measure 50 psi, which is okay. No, uh, I, I need to show factor two. I need to show. Uh, oh, maybe I need in the first uh, one of the first slides. Uh, yes, the second. Yeah, this, this one. one. And you can see, for example, for for single specimen, it's around 100. And for GCB specimen, it's around 17. Okay. So now, that ASTM, American Society for Testing and Material method, okay. you think that if I use that method and I do the measurement on a 3 point bed specimen and then tension, I will get different structure? Yes, Absolutely. I'm sure. So I'm sure. if you want to be uh, in agreement with Americans, you always have to use compact tension, <laughs> and then the problem is solved. <laughs> because you know that uh, it has made some kind of main compact as it is. That's very interesting. Now, sorry if I can. No, no, no. no. If, if I do this test on a semi elliptical crack, do you think that at the depth at the bottom of the semi-elliptical crack. Which constraint will you expect on the high side or on the right hand side? Under tension? Yes, under tension. <coughs> and compared to the through thickness? Yes. Right. Like, in, like through thickness? And, uh, uh, yes. For uh, surface crack, we will have more high constraint. Okay. David? I just wanted to say that um, I, I thought you're moving, I thought you were going to do elastic plastic, but you've done elastic cream, which, which is good. And I like the idea that through time, you lose constraint. But I, uh, myself, Martin Pavin, a research student of ours, looked at the same problem in fracture in aluminium. <coughs> but it was elastic plastic fracture. Um, the conclusion we came to Although my student, it's my student's conclusion, so, you know. The question is that when we started this, we said, does that mean 
if you have in plane constraint and out of plane constraint, do you need a third axis to the diagram? Do you need a map, you know, a surface that tells you how constraint? And then in the end we said, and it's not a, a totally original idea, a guy called Ted Anderson did some work, and he basically said, how do I relate the toughness to some parameter that gives me an idea about constraint? And the answer is the plastic zone size. So what we said was, let's correlate the plastic zone size, or the volume of material that's gone plastic, to both in-plane constraint and out-of-plane constraint. So if you plot fracture data, fracture toughness against uh, the volume of plastic material, and you have to do a finite element analysis to do that, you get a nice correlation. Okay. And we did this in aluminium, and we came to the conclusion that you have to do a finite element analysis to tell you how much plasticity you occur before you get onset of fracture. Mm -hmm. okay. So it was a so to correlate that uh, vertical axis toughness against constraint, you basically plot the plastic zone size from a finite element analysis for both in plane constraint yeah. you know, and out of plane constraint, and it worked reasonably well. On a, this is on an aluminium though. Aluminium where the ductility is very low before onset of fracture anyway. Yeah, I agree. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it will, it will be a very good idea. So it is, it's not for the development of one trade, uh, yeah. the correct yeah. fracture mechanics. Yeah. It's a good idea, you know. <laughs> By definition, toughness is the plus work inside the plus. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's it? Yeah, yeah. That's all it's saying. Right. You need more work. Sure. You need a higher toughness. <coughs> you want to trust it? Yeah, you have plotted the notch toughness, not the fracture toughness, sir. No, 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 it's notch fracture toughness. Yes. And even if you would plot the fracture toughness, the specimen thickness would not re uh, fulfill the ISTM requirement, sir. No, 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 it, we will have a similar effect. Okay. I'm sure. But, uh, but here we have yes. uh, same thickness for all specimens. So, right. so if, if you, do you think that you will also have such a T-stress effect if you would fulfill the, the thickness as well as the, uh, the, the ligament uh, criteria. Yeah, but uh, in this case we need to uh, incorporate in this uh, picture and uh, basic equations uh, T3 stress corresponding out of flame constraint. It will change thickness. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you fatigue pre-crack this? No. Uh, you mean here? Yeah. yeah. No, because this is a notch. Mm -hmm. All right. And the second thing is that the double cantry event measurement you'll see, is it? Special C, what's the DCB? This one? Yeah. DCB. Exactly. Right? DCB, yeah. yeah. And uh, this specimen has a uh, very high constraint compared with the uh, nice specimen equations. So when you made that notch, the depth of that notch was the same in all specimens? Not just the ratio was the same. I think we are constrained by time now. So, who does the same?